hello friends my name is praveen today i am going to create a web api using database first approach if you are interested in a code first approach uh, then i have already created another video on that uh, you can find the link in the description box below in the database first approach uh, a database will be created first and then using web api and entity framework core i will be connecting that to the database and reading the values from the database I'll also be using some post methods to update the database through the web api now in the, for this tutorial i'm using visual studio 2022 dotnet uh, core 6 and entity framework core 6 i'm also using uh, sql server express uh, so all these things are free you can get the visual studio 2022 community edition from microsoft's website uh, similarly microsoft uh, visual studio express edition is also available on microsoft's website uh, and if you want to download the management studio uh, that also you can download for free uh, from the microsoft website all these links i will provide in the uh, description box below so uh, let's uh, start this uh, tutorial uh, so you have to create you have to open this visual studio 2022, 2022 uh, like this and then uh, create a new project here select asp.net core web api now give a name uh, for your project uh, so for this uh, tutorial i will uh, give a name like uh, student api so i'll create a student table and uh, so that's why i'm calling it as a student api it will retrieve the information about the students uh, now leave this as default the dotnet 6 is the default one uh, for 2022 edition so uh, leave it and then click on the create button So your API has been created now. Uh, you can delete this weather forecast, which is which is the default one, uh, so it is not needed. Uh, and there is a controller here, so this can be deleted. Uh, so let's create a models folder, which will be needed uh, as we will be storing all our model related data in the model models folder. and then let's go to the database uh, so open uh, microsoft uh, sql server management studio and then uh, i assume that you have already installed this sql express so connect to your instance now you can see uh, this folder databases so let's create a new database let's name the database as student and click on ok database has been created now so let's create a new table okay so it id as integer and then here you can uh make it as identity so there is an entity specification so this entity you can select it as yes so it will increment by one so when we uh, add something so it will be automatically incremented and i want to make it as a primary key so right click and then set primary key then question will be name and uh, then uh, we can give something called as a roll number and the city in which the student lives or let's say the country here we can increment to g that is fine country Let's make it 25. So I think uh, that's it. Uh, so I don't want to make it uh, too big. Uh, just want to keep it simple. So name, roll number, country. Roll number is a, a identification which uh, will show uh, the roll number of the student. So every student will have a unique roll number. Name is the name of the student. 
country the country to which the student uh, belongs to so that country so all this uh, can be nullable uh, but it makes sense to make this and this non nullable so i'm i'm unchecking that uh, allow nulls box now we can actually save it ask for the uh, so names let me give name student tell so our student detail table is now uh, created let's refresh this so this should come up here uh, it is coming up here uh, showing detail now let's insert some data so right click and edit so the name of the student uh, say john roll number e country uh the next one is uh the rosie x country Bill. see the id is getting incremented automatically i'm not adding it adding this because it is identity column uh and the next uh student name uh will be Sam X UK. So now these three students have been added. We can now close this and let's go back to our Visual Studio. Now, here uh, we have to add some uh, NuGet packages. So let's go to manage NuGet packages, browse. And then search for Entity Framework SQL Server. Install this. Okay, and the next one is Entity Framework Core dot Tools. Install this. And then we need to configuration values. So select configuration and install particular NuGet package. So once these things are done, now uh, our uh, NuGet packages has been added. So what we will do now is uh, we have to run a, a scaffolding command. So, so go to your package manager console. And type this command scaffold db context uh give the database name trusted connection and here microsoft dot in and put directory models folder so now the scaffolding is done so you can see uh two uh, model objects has been created one is student context another is uh, student details student detail right now you can see this uh, error here so what we need to do is uh, create a connection string uh, so copy this go to app settings here create a new connection string db on So this should work.
a connection string has been created so it goes to sql server uh, and database student so once this is created the next step is to update the program.cs file before that uh, you can go back here and delete this this is not needed and now let's go windows yeah now go to program.cs here uh, you need to add uh, the namespace so use this namespace what else and then you also need to add soft entity framework for okay so now uh, below this add controllers uh, we need to add another line of code so it will be dot add text here the context object will be student context yes paste it here within bracket since sin dot uh, use SQL server and within this we have to read this value from the uh, configuration file so we'll use builder dot configuration dot get connection string so it will read it from the app settings uh, json file and here you need to give that uh, key which is uh, db con and then close this uh, statement with semicolon so this line of code uh, will read the connection string uh, from the app settings dot json so once this is done we should be able to build the solution without any errors so build succeeded which is all good now next step is to add the api controller so that we will do use uh, scaffolding so uh, right click add new scaffolded item and here select api and then select using entity framework okay and click on add now here select when detail as the model class and here data context name should be student context now this controller name will be created uh, this controller will be created with this name click on add uh, sometimes you may get error when you are uh, doing this so don't worry if you get that you just repeat the process uh, which means uh, click on the right click on the right controllers again and uh, again add a new scaffolded item and it should be able to add the uh, controller so the controller uh, has been created now uh, so that is the path so api slash controller name and you should be able to hit this controller uh, so that's so our web api is now ready and it is ready to run so to test this api so let's just quickly go through what it has created so you click on this drop down and you can see all these operations uh, which are added to this api controller so you can delete a student you can get student detail uh, using id or you can get student details of all the students in the database table uh, then you can post uh, you can update uh, student information so like this you have different uh, operations which have been added uh, to the controller uh, and you can go through the code and see uh, how this all uh, uh, you know uh, the detail of that code uh, what it is doing exactly uh, in the code so let's now run it So when you run uh, it uh, uses swagger to uh, run this uh, to test this api so you can see the all the uh, operations of this api here in the swagger window so click on get and let's try it out in details uh, click on execute now it's hitting the api and you can see it has come back with some results like john rosie sam 
so these are the uh so these are the student names which we have given in the database okay so let's put a breakpoint and see what exactly happens so here you can see it is trying to hit this uh get student details so if we go here and let's repeat it try it out and click on execute so it is hitting this breakpoint here so let me hit f10 and now the control is in the next line so if i go to the student details keep my cursor here and click this in the results view i am seeing that there are three records and if you go here you can see that this is the record this is the first record and this is the second record and so on so that is how it is getting the data from the database uh, so if i hit continue now this same result will appear here in this window here in the swagger ui so that's how uh, you create this api uh, i will do one more thing is uh, i will uh, i can also use postman uh, to hit this api so before doing that uh, what you can do you can just remove this swagger and you can go here and uh, type print details you can hit here so let's remove this breakpoint click on continue and you can see the name of the students now you, you may be wondering why this space is there because i have given n care not a n where care in the database uh, database that's why it is all the space is coming you can use where care which will opt uh, which will uh, in that case it will not the space will be removed and only the uh, number of characters that is present that will only come back not the extra sp space so that's how you uh, uh, hit the api from the browser now so now i have opened postman so what i will do is i will now test the api so uh, to get to the default method here now click on send and you can see the results in the below window so the next thing what i can do is i can uh, use a post method so for that let me copy this data here and then select post from the drop down go to body select raw and here select json from number 89 country and let's send this so a new uh, record has been created with id4 so we can go back to our get and say send so it should get back all our students now you can see the fourth student has been created and it is coming back as tom so that's how you test uh, using uh, postman so uh, that's all about this tutorial uh, I hope you liked and enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, please uh, post your comments below and uh, hit the like button. Uh, thanks a lot for watching.